In this video, we'll take a simple example of harmonic oscillator and how to use canonical transformations in that. So let's look at using canonical transformations. Okay, so let me first remove this. Okay, so the Hamiltonian you are well familiar with now, which is H is P square over 2M and the uh, potential term is half m omega square q square. Okay, so this is a uh, sum of two squares. This is a square, that's a square. I will just pull out a factor of 1 over 2m. Not necessary, but I'll do it. p square plus m square omega square q square. Okay, now if you look at this, you have um, the Q's and P's as squares, okay, and this immediately suggests that we should be using some better coordinates for this better set of uh, conjugate coordinates for this instead of what we are using here. So let me tell you uh, why I'm saying that. Imagine you were looking at x square plus y square, okay? You're doing some problem, and this was something in two dimensions with x and y as the coordinates. And this is all your functions that you have in your problem appear to be having um, uh, composed of these kind of arguments. So they always have x square plus y square and such things. Then you realize that this is not the most uh, convenient choice of coordinates, you could instead go to the polar coordinates. Okay. Meaning you could go to r and theta. The advantage of doing r and theta is your x square plus y square, where for example x is r cos theta and y is r sin theta, immediately turns x square plus y square into r square. Okay. You see your theta is gone now. So you have only the radial coordinate. So this is what we want to do here in our case also because this is a sum of these two squares and my Hamiltonian has uh, such a nice form that I should be looking for a better coordinate system. Coordinate system in the phase space. So I would like to look for a Look for polar coordinates. Okay. Something which looks like what we have here. Okay, so that's the idea. Mm. So, uh, how should we do that? Well, I should be looking for some. Uh, canonical transformation and because I don't want my equations of motion to get changed so I, I'm looking for canonical transformations and which means I should be looking for an appropriate generating function okay so I should be looking for an appropriate generating function Okay, so let's see what we want first. What we want is that my small p, just like my x here, should become r times cos theta. I want here 
to have some function f of p which is the equivalent of r here okay times cos of q so instead of having a piece cos theta here as we had in this case here i look for a coordinate q which appears in the argument of cos okay and similarly my q small q should be f of capital p okay you can write here as m omega q so this this piece is m omega q whole square so i'm writing m omega q is sin fp times sin of q okay so this is in the same uh, way the things are written on this side in the margin okay that's good um, that much i can do now this will be nice because in the new coordinates if if this if i could show that this transformation is canonical then that would imply that the new hamiltonian h prime would be same as h with uh the small q being expressed in capital q and capital p and small p being expressed in capital q and capital p so that will be the new hamiltonian and let's look at what it would be well by construction i'm what i'm doing is i'm choosing uh, polar coordinates so that when i may, uh, look at this sum of squares it will be left only with the p coordinate capital p and the pole uh, the angular coordinate q would disappear okay so what you will get here is 1 by 2 m and you substitute p and q from here to there and you get f p whole square okay that's what you'll get so note that the q which i will call as angular coordinate because it's very analogous to what you have here um is cyclic okay it's cyclic because it doesn't appear in the hamiltonian which is nice because if that is cyclic then the conjugate momentum which we have to find out okay f of um the conjugate momentum i have to find out that conjugate momentum would be conserved okay it will be a constant so that's why i want to do this now let's go to figuring out what will be the um um this transformation function okay so let's look at or try to find out what would be the sorry i think i said transformation function i meant generating function what will be the appropriate generating function so i'm looking at a gen i'm trying to search for a generating function which will do the above transformation and this relation i already know you remember those two relations which we have already tabulated here here okay the first one so derivative with respect to small q gives small p and that's what i'm writing here small p is what you get from taking derivative with respect to small q okay so right hand side is a function of small q q and capital q okay so i should express small p also in those functions uh, in those arguments so if i divide these two equations let me call this one 1 <coughs> and <coughs> this one 2 if i divide equation 1 by 2 then i get let me write divide 1 by 2 then i get small p is m w q cot of q is nice from here i can try to 
um, find out what the capital F1 is. Okay, what's the generating function? Okay, now the requirement here is that if I take a derivative of F1, I should get mw q cot q. So delta F1 over delta q should be mw or omega, sorry, q cot of q. Okay, and that's easy. If I integrate both sides with respect to q, and remember that's the partial derivative, so I can write it as Okay, so taking the derivative with respect to q will generate a 2q which will cancel the half and that will give this piece. And of course, if you add to this any term which is only a function of capital Q, taking a partial derivative will um, kill this piece. Okay, so we can drop this. Um, I mean, this is the general form, but in what I'm going to do next is I'm going to just drop this piece. So I will take F1 to be simply this. Half cot of Q. Okay, that will be the generating function. Okay, now I have used one equation here. I still have the second relation available to me. I will use that one now. Okay, so this one I'm going to use. Let's see. If I do that, then I have to take a derivative of F1 with capital Q and that will give minus Q minus P. Let me write it down here for ease. Um, that This was the equation there, okay. So if I do this, I get minus P is equal to derivative of F1 with Q and that is minus M omega by 2 Q square cosecant square of Q or capital P is m omega over 2 q square 1 over sine square of q. Okay, I can invert it and if I do so I get the coordinate small q, the old coordinate to be 2 p over m omega sine of q. Okay, so now we see immediately that our f of p is equal to 2m omega capital P. Okay, so we have figured out now what um, this piece is. Okay, that's good. Um, now what? Okay, so I, I know the transformation. And let me f ask what is the Hamiltonian now? My H prime is H, which is just 1 over 2M. Let me go back where it is. Here, 1 over 2M. And you substitute in here, uh, P square plus Q square term. You substitute this thing these equations 1 and 2 and remember what we have found for f of p and if you do that you will get not surprisingly 2m omega capital P which is just omega times p. Okay so that's your new Hamiltonian which only has a radial coordinate p and the angular coordinate q has disappeared and that's the reason why we did this transformation. Now as I said Q is cyclic, which means the conjugate momentum P has to be a constant. Okay, and also, uh, let me write because Q is cyclic. Also, the system is a conservative system, which means that the Hamiltonian 
is also a conserved quantity and let us call uh, this constant the value of energy to be E. Then I see that P is just E over omega. Okay. So, that is nice. Now, let us look at the canonical equations of motion. Yes, so I want to find out how, for example, the coordinate Q evolves with time. Let me remove this. Now, if you recall the canonical equations of motion, then you will, you will remember that Q dot is delta H over delta P. Okay, and that we can easily calculate. Our Q dot is, if I take the partial derivative of, I should put an H prime to be more uh, consistent. Let me let me put it. H prime is anyway H. So uh, a Q dot is derivative of this, and which is just omega. Okay, so that's the equation of motion, and it's of course a first order equation of uh, motion. And I can immediately solve it and I get Q equals omega t plus some constant phi. And if you insert this back into the definition or the relation here, okay, you will find the small q. And the small q will be this. So I insert this and I get 2 e where I have used the value of p to be okay whatever it is times sine of omega t plus phi okay so that's the solution which we are very familiar with but we have also derived it now using the um, yeah, using the canonical transformations of course this is not the simplest way of deriving it, it, it but it does show you the the use of canonical transformations in doing in looking at certain problems okay so um, this is for this video and we'll meet in the next video